All right, welcome back. Is it Christmas? No, just the $1.89 bubble mailer envelope from this particular individual that decided to sell me this knife. Let's see if we can open this without inflicting damage. That should do it. Ooh, cool. This is a private sale. That's funny. <laughs> That's all upside down. You'll see bronze dated. I'm really impressed with the supply chain method of Tactile Knife Co. <clears throat> that is just a cool looking model. Um, so I've mentioned it before. I'm really uh, into the Tactile Knife um, model, whatever you call it, the Rockwell. I really like it. And this particular one reminds me a lot of my grandfather's old lighter. Obviously not the exact same color, more of a gold, more of a bronze, but just the overall like thickness, feel in hand, etc. There's just something nostalgic about it. And from a gentleman's life perspective is a pretty cool model and a tough one to compete with. So this one is a I don't know if you want to call it a spin-off, but a exclusive version um, from American Edge, and I think they had it at some knife show of the tactile, the Titanium Tactile Knife Co. Um, Rockwall Thumb Stud, awesome knife, Magna Cut, one of my favorites. I have a lot of different versions of this, and I just seek out the exclusive versions that I think are really cool. This happens to be one of them. It has DLC coating on the pivot hardware and on the thumb studs. Oh, that is so weird. It seems like another one where like maybe the, I could be seeing things, but yeah, I'm probably just seeing things. It feels like maybe that thumb stud's like a little smaller on that side than on the other side, which is just uh, very odd. Um, if so, I'll try and double check it and not make assumptions, but yeah, just the level of detail, DLC on the back spacer, surprised they didn't go DLC coating on the pocket clip. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know why they didn't do that. Maybe that's just, uh, they s keep some things consistent. I don't know. Oh, and then you get the black on the tactile knife there, which is cool. Oops, whoops, there we go. So the uh, standard tactile, it's already pretty cool looking versus the blacked out version. It's not, it's already kind of so small that it looks sort of darker black, but you can see that one's actually got that really filled in there. And on the, uh, on the Magna Cut, that's cool. So. Yeah, really neat, uh, neat knife that uh, I'm excited to have. This is uh, another great example of one that just works super well. I've had a couple that come with uh, strong detent. Maybe not a couple. Maybe, yeah, maybe a couple. Um, this one is fantastic. The grind looks a little different than the other one I have here. Like it looks a little short. It's still sharp. Let me uh, get out some paper real quick. Not super sharp. Kind of hard to get it in there. Let's see by comparison. Maybe it's just a piece of paper. That thing's real slicey. Yeah, this thing is not super sharp. If you do a slice cut, maybe it's just back here. Let me try it. If you do a slice cut, you're okay. But this one, you can just push cut through it. 
this one you really can't so yeah it's a little dull kind of surprising there but that's what knife sharpeners are for Tactile Knife Co. In some ways, I think they have a phenomenal manufacturing process and tolerances are super tight and there's some just amazing things about them. And then I just had a couple of weird experiences with their Anno coats, with their grinds. I have one of the old flippers where the blade says XHP on it. And then the Certificate of Authenticity says 20V on it. I didn't buy that one, 20 CV rather. I didn't buy that one new. So I'm not 100% sure what the story is on that. Um, but I think, you know, this is like their first, what I'll call production line. They put out some small batch, if you will, productions. But this is their first time going broad production. For some reason, I like miss the reverse flick on this one a lot. I don't know what it is. The detent on this one is definitely stronger than on this one. This one's got an extremely light detent to the point where I'm check gonna check. It's still rock solid there. This one might just need to get backed off a little bit here. The thumb's working phenomenally here. I'm going to switch to my fingernail, but I can like put the tip of my thumb into this and get it out like every time now. Uh, when I first got it, it was a little strong. The finger flick though is a little inconsistent. Part of it's just this is cut back more. Not much, maybe it's the same. It's not cut back more, is it? Um, anyway. These are not like my everyday carry knives. Um, they're a little small and a little fancy, if you will. I don't know what the right, the main reason is. I actually wouldn't mind probably this basic one carrying this on a daily basis now. Now that it's loosened up, I could probably see myself doing it. Just a little, I could, I could do it. There's something not quite there for me on it, but I can't quite place it. You know, versus the Demco, I just feel like the Demco is a little more rugged or something. I like an EDC. These are definitely a definitely a gentleman's knife. Potential EDC is there. It's light enough. It's tough enough. You got magna cut, corrosion resistance, titanium. Like there's, it just feels like it should be like a little bigger and tougher somehow. And like the accessibility here, I, I do have to like focus way too much to open it. Like it is just a little, it always feel like a little dangerous, like I'm going to cut myself. <laughs> I don't know how better to put it, but it's probably not the one I'm the most confident deploying of everything in my collection. If they could take a lesson from the Wee Banter on how to do a thumb stud. I mean, this is like the best reverse flick stud I can think of in my collection. I'm trying to think of something I can reverse flick more consistently on a thumb stud than this. Uh, I can't think of something. The D10 is just perfect. The ability to get to the thumb stud is perfect both for fingernail and for tip of the thumb. Of course, then I miss it. I'm kind of turning it in a weird direction to show it on the video. And then for the reverse flick. That is probably the best, one of the best deploying. It's a little strong on the detent. It's just a little strong. It could be like 20% less. It would be that much better, but it's kind of nice because you like feel like it's robust the way it's done. But I can't think of a, of a thumb stud that has those three deployments quite as good as that one. And I feel like this knife could kind of benefit from a couple tweaks. Um, but I think what they're doing is they're bringing out a new line that will appeal to people with bigger hands and probably play a little bit of a different role in their lineup. So I'm a total 
um, you know, I don't know what the right term is, nerd on these, or like collector on these. Um, I just love them. One of my favorite ones is this one. It is the Monkey Edge Frag Pattern. I just think that this is so cool looking. In fact, if I was going to carry one of them, this might be the one. It'd be either that one or this one. I'm not sure. This one actually I feel like is a little easier to deploy. The detent's just a little better on it. So just because of the two that I happen to have. And maybe I could mess around with like loosening the pivot screw a little bit on that one. That one's got perfect lockup too. This, this one feels like an EDC to me actually. It just, the material and everything, this feels a little more like it's designed to be used than the other two here. And this one would freak me out because I just feel like I was going to knock the Anno right off of it every time I deployed it. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's probably not bad from that perspective or whatever, but I, I don't know. I've Like I said, I had a little issue here and there with their Anno finishes, so a little hesitant. So I also have the, uh, gosh, do I have another one coming in? Got the golf ball here. Boom. Not my favorite. Oh, I, might, I might sell that one to be honest. Just not my favorite of the, of the bunch. And I gotta just pull this one out of the actual box and show you the box because I'm so nerdy on it. This is the original, the OG, with the uh, flipper. So it's not the thumbstead, it's the rock wall flipper. And that one is a, uh, where is it? It's written uh, in there. No, it's not in there. It's in here. Sorry, there you go. XHP blade steel, whereas all these others out here are magna cut. Sorry, let me get the zoom in right. And we'll just throw that little flipper right there. Look at the fam look at this happy family. These are cool knives. They are not perfect, and I'm okay with it, just like family. Just like family. Family is never perfect, but you love them. Yeah, this is a really neat little lineup here for me. Um, and a rare set of knives that I think look just really, really cool when they're folded. So let me show you this view here. And as you get to know these, they do different things with the pivot hardware, depending on which exclusive it is. In this case, it's just the DLC coat. This one, that one's like that. Um, in the case of this Monkey Edge, they have like the Monkey Edge logo there. And then the cool thing on the, uh, the golf one here, the golf ball one, is they actually line up the golf balls. I don't know if I can zoom in on that but they like basically get the golf balls lined up like almost exactly, if not exactly, which I think is really cool. Cause that's not easy. That's, that's an extra detail that not every knife manufacturer is gonna do. Make them in China, that'd be a pretty uh, interesting exercise to try and get the manufacturer to do that well, I bet. Um, that'd take some people leadership skills. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think this is just a really cool collection. And like I was just mentioning, they look really cool when they're folded too. Um, there's just something, some little special thing about this model to me. Part of it's that they use Magna Cut very early on, which I'm really into and interested in. And part of it's just the, the form factor is just very compelling to me for some reason. It's just something kind of artsy about about them. I don't really know exactly what it is. Like I'm always tempted to like set them up in different directions and stuff. <laughs> and see if I can make them look cool. 
Uh, no idea why, but it just kind of, I'm just compelled to like do art with this knife because that's what it kind of feels like to me is a, a nice blend of fashion and function. Um, which some knife makers do better than others, if we're just being honest. Some of them are very function first. <clears throat> some of them are very fashion first. I don't think I have anything here. Mm, yeah, I don't think I really have anything here that exemplifies that. My Rockstead, maybe. I don't know if Rockstead I'd call fashion first. There's also some function to the insane labor they put into that knife. Um but you know what I'm talking about out there. They they do exist. And then some of them just have a really interesting blend of fashion and function. And I feel like this uh, this falls into that category for sure. So interesting to me that they don't do the uh, DLC on that pocket clip. I feel like that would be a cool touch that wouldn't have been expensive. I don't know if that's the right term, but Maybe they didn't like the way it looked. Maybe they tried it and they just decided they're going to keep the pocket clip the same as all the others for some reason. Maybe it was functionality. Maybe it was, you know, wear on the pocket. Who knows? Um, but that's just interesting to me that that doesn't have the black DLC on the pocket clip too. I think that would have been a... That feels like the right thing to do on that one to me. So, yep, there you go. Um... If you don't know these, I've done other videos on them, so I'm not going to go much deeper on it, but uh, excited to have this one. It's a really cool example of a really cool knife that uh, a really cool knife company or a pen company, I guess, in this case, is putting out there. So, uh, yeah, glad to have it. hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next one. Take care.